We're rolling. Welcome to the REI Rookies Podcast, the real estate investing rookies podcast, episode number 88, where we invite you to follow us on our journey towards financial freedom using the power of real estate. I'm Josh Koth. And I'm Jack Haas. Here at REI Rookies, we believe in a couple key principles. Number one, the best way to retain information is by teaching it to others. And number two, a rising tide lifts all boats. We're not competitors, we're a community. So let's get into some real estate investing. So this week, we're going to talk about limiting beliefs. Yeah, we we all know how crucial we believe that mindset is, and it's such a huge percentage of why people are successful. We try to concentrate on that quite a bit. So every few episodes, we'll have a mindset-focused episode. And I heard kind of an interesting story the other day and wanted to kind of talk about that and how this particular event in history contributes and relates to limiting beliefs and real estate specifically. So we've all heard about the four minute mile and what a tough barrier that was to break through. And Roger Bannister is famous for breaking the four minute mile on May 6th, 1954. And prior to that, uh, nobody was able to get under four minutes. Uh, Actually, the record was at four minute one second for nine years. Right, so that tells you what a barrier that was. Um, but then, interestingly enough, after Roger Bannister broke that record and ran a sub four minute mile at three minutes fifty nine seconds point four, three minutes fifty nine point four seconds, uh, within less than a year, someone else broke it. So that record had stood for nine years, and then there was kind of a string of people that were continually breaking the record uh, every, you know, a few times a year. All the way, you know, it just became much more rapid pace that they they were running the sub four minute mile, and it's interesting how that held for for nine years. But once somebody had successfully done it, then everyone could see that it was possible and they had certainty that it was achievable. And now people started just blasting through it in a much more higher frequency. I found that very interesting. What does that say to you, Jack? Well, I think what's really interesting is that in in your write up here. There were a lot of experts, supposed experts, and talking about how the human body wasn't even, it wasn't possible to break the four minute. So it's it just kind of telling how other people's, other people's thoughts and opinions can actually hold you back. Yeah, that's very true. You know, like, nobody will ever break that. Nobody will ever be able to run faster than four minutes. Uh, if you're thinking like that, you won't. I mean, it, your mindset does affect your results. And we found that to be completely true. So I just found it interesting that the record held for nine years, but then as soon as he broke through, then people were doing it at a rapid pace. And in fact, it's not even crazy for good, really good high school runners now to run sub four minute miles, which is crazy thinking that back in 1954, that it was unattainable by any human. And now people in high school really good high school runners can technically hit that mark. You know, I I think what's what's a good analogy or a good way of thinking about this too, and when it comes to real estate investing is let's talk about that first deal when you're, when you're trying to find that first opportunity to take advantage of, it seems like once you get that first opportunity or deal under your belt, the other ones start to come more frequently and, and a little more easier. Yep. Totally agree with that. (laughs) Well, it's also just like you aren't going to find a a person who is willing to do seller financing or seller carryback until you experience it for that first time. Right. Unless you believe it's possible or you talk to someone that it's currently running deals that way and has done it. And then you just once you see someone doing it, you have the certainty that it's achievable and that allows you permission mentally to go ahead and get that for yourself. We talked about previously that people don't want to do business with somebody who is unsure of themselves or or has that stink of desperation. (laughs) Well, that's the same situation in this case. You know, uh, we're talking about your first deal or you're finding somebody who do to do seller carry back. It's that level of confidence that you're that you're bringing in just the mere belief that it's possible. Yeah. And that's something that subconsciously affects how you interact with sellers, with lenders, 
private private lenders, you know, institutional lenders, uh, buyers, anybody, anybody involved in these transactions, you have to appear confident and be able to they have to be able to smell that on you. You have to exude confidence. And if you don't think something's possible, you're not going to seem confident. And they can just tell. I and mean, it's just a weird psychological subconscious thing people can detect. So you know when we're making offers, we just have to be. Well, this is just what it is. Here's here's the numbers, and here's why. And the people we're talking to have no doubt that we're certain of what we're saying. Whether they disagree with it or not is is another question, and we can negotiate. But they have to believe that you're serious about your numbers and your belief that you can deliver on what you're stating you can. And one of the ones that has changed for me recently, and I, I'm going to say us because I think it's an us thing, is is the concept of principal-only payments. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was kind of a, one of those things where – I didn't believe that it was possible, but then you hear people doing it all the time. And, you know, that's an example of seller financing where you're basically saying, I'm going to give you X amount down and then we're going to divide the rest up into equal payments. And they're basically letting you pay down the principal only. And in your mind, you think, why would anybody agree to that? You know, they're leaving all this interest on the table and potential profit on the table. Why would anybody ever agree to that? And if you don't believe And if you wouldn't operate that way, you don't believe other people would either. But there are people out there where that situation could possibly work, that arrangement could work for them. So you just need to believe that it's possible, seek out people that are doing it, and be convinced, see see it for yourself that it is possible. Or at least believe it enough to make it an option for for the person you're talking to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think we were excluding that to a certain extent just because we just didn't believe it was something anybody would ever do. Yeah, you just think, well, no one's ever going to accept that. So why would I ever propose it? And, you know, that's kind of where we're at. But, I mean, you can trace it back to even making profitable offers on your first property ever, even if it's just a regular cash offer. You, When you're doing your first deal, you don't believe people are ever going to accept a deeply discounted price. But we know for a fact that there's people out there that will. We do it all the time. But before you have one of those accepted it is tough. And I, I was just talking to someone today, actually, that he said, oh, geez, you know, they're they're asking 119 for this place. I really want it. You know, I think 99 is the price, but boy, I just, I just don't see that happening. And I said, well, you have your price you'd like to offer, offer that price. And he was hesitant, kind of afraid. And, I, and it was on the MLS. So I said, you're not even the one that has to deliver the number to anyone. All you have to do is tell your agent that's representing you. They're the one that's going to have to deliver the bad news to the listing agent. They're going to have to incur any type of pain. But even though he was protected by two layers of people between him and the seller to even hear the negative response, he still didn't want to submit the offer for $20,000 under asking price. And unless he's willing to break through that, he's not going to find success as a real estate investor uh, because he, he doesn't believe it's possible and he's not willing to submit those offers. And as we all know, that you have to submit a bunch of those types of offers to get any accepted. And, and you know, as you're getting up into larger and larger deals, what I think is interesting is that some of these mindset changes that you need to, that need to happen when you're de- dealing with these single family homes, it's something you got to overcome with or come to terms with now because. When you're dealing with these larger opportunities, those things aren't that may not be possible, such as a seller carry back. It may not be possible or you're not going to find it very frequently with a single family home. But frankly, I think it's more common in these larger deals. It's it's a more common thing to come across when you're talking about a multifamily. Yeah, exactly. And that's why it's important to speak to people that are working in the space you want to be in that are doing deals profitably in whatever asset class or whatever space you want to be in to get that certainty that these things are possible. Uh, Another example is, you know, when you're starting out and you're buying your first single family rental for, you know, $100,000 or something, you drive by 100 plexes all day long and you think, well, I could never own one of those. But somebody does. You know, mm-hmm. there's somebody out there that owns all those hundredplexes, 
And, you know, they weren't born with bazillions of dollars typically. You know, they they came out of the womb and, and were young kids and, and somehow had to find their way into the ownership position of a hundred plex. So if they can do that, why couldn't you as a reasonably smart individual, you know, also work your way into ownership position of a hundred plex? Um, you just have to seek those people out that are doing that and meet them and believe that it's possible. So I think we gave some pretty good examples and even some that we're struggling with ourselves right now. Mm -hmm. Um, if you have any thoughts or suggestions on things that you've had to overcome, we'd love to hear some thoughts or feedback at info at reirookies.com. Make sure you hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at REI Rookies. And if you like what you're hearing, head over to iTunes, subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. It really helps other rookie investors out there find the show. And remember, get off the bench. And get into the game. We'll see you next time. Now i got to go run a four-minute mile. And I broke my ankle. I don't like to tell a man what to do with his money, but if you ain't investing in property, then you're dumber than a dummy. I'm not dumb. I'm smart. Well, buy property. That's my advice.